Hello friends, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at Ilo Pathology. This is the part 6 of uh, the series of videos which I am planning to make on inflammation. So in the previous tutorial, uh, that is inflammation part 5, we uh, discussed about uh, the arachidonic acid metabolites and the, the roles of these metabolites in inflammation, isn't it? So if, if you have not seen that video, you can even click the link below to find those videos. And if you are visiting uh, here for the first time, I would suggest you to you know go through all the previous videos so that there is uh, continuity in learning. In today's uh, tutorial, we'll be uh, talking about the cytokines, the role of cytokines in acute inflammation. So in the next uh, 12 to 15 minutes, we will understand what cytokines are, what are the general properties of cytokines, and the roles of uh, these cytokines in inflammation. We will concentrate on these two uh, important cytokines, that is the family of uh, interleukins and chemokines. And lastly, we'll conclude with uh, understanding some applied aspects of these cytokines. Now, what are cytokines? Cytokines is actually a combination of two Greek words, cyto, which means cell, and kinos, which means movement. So these are low molecular weight regulatory proteins or glycoproteins which are secreted by white blood cells and various other cells in the body in response to a number of stimuli. And these cells are mainly, you know, they are activated lymphocytes, the macrophages, the dendritic cells, but can also be endothelial cells, the epithelial cells and connective tissue cells. So basically these cytokines mediate inflammatory and immune reactions. So for this tutorial, I will concentrate more on, I will concentrate only on inflammatory reactions. Cytokine is actually a general term. The other names uh, which we routinely use are the interleukins, which is produced by one leukocyte and acts on another leukocyte. Okay, there is a crosstalk between two leukocytes. That is the reason why the name interleukins. The second uh, name uh, which we frequently come across is lymphokines, which are produced by lymphocytes. The monokines, which are produced by monocytes. The chemokines, which are the cytokines, which have chemotactic activities. Okay, we'll be discussing about these in detail later. Interferons, which are involved in antiviral responses and colony stimulating factors, which supports the growth of blood cells. Now, what are the general properties of cytokines? How do they act? In this illustration, you are seeing two cells, one here and one here, which is a distant cell. And each of these cells have the receptors there. And that is a, a blood vessel uh, depicting circulation. So uh, consider that these are cytokines produced by this particular cell. And if these cytokines circulate in the circulation and then acts on a cell which is distant to the site of its origin. If the cytokines produced act on a distant cell to produce the effects, this particular action is referred to as endocrine action. Now we have another scenario where, you know, the produced cytokines acts on a cell which is very close to it and this particular type of action is referred to as paracrine action and the last scenario is the cytokines produced act on the same cell this particular type of action is referred to as autocrine action in most of the acute inflammatory reactions or in general in most of the inflammatory reactions the autocrine and the paracrine action are the ones which are which predominate whereas the systemic manifestations of inflammatory reaction that is the production of fever is brought about by the endocrine action of cytokines the other properties exhibited by cytokines are, uh, these are referred to as pleiotrophic, redundancy, the cascade induction, synergy and antagonism. Now, what do you mean by pleiotrophic? Pleiotrophic means different cell types can secrete the same cytokine. A single cytokine can act on several different cell types. When the different cytokines bring about similar function, that is when the property is referred to as redundant or redundancy. One cytokine stimulating its target cells to, to uh, make additional cytokines and this particular action is referred to as cascade induction. Sometimes, you know, the combination of cytokines can produce a combined effect which is much, much greater than the sum of their separate effects and that is called a synergy. And lastly, two cytokines on a particular cell can have opposite action and that is called antagonism. Now, moving on to you know understanding in detail about a few of these cytokines particularly the first one being interleukins now what are interleukins interleukins are the ones which mediate the leukocyte crosstalk and hence the name interleukin 
up to 38 interleukins have been so far identified you know it is numbered according to the order of discovery the latest one being interleukin number 38 they are involved in the pathogenesis of human inflammatory and autoimmune diseases the, now the interleukins and other cytokines which have a significant role in acute inflammation are the interleukin 1 the interleukin 6 interleukin 17 tnf alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha and chemokines now we need to know that there are only two important cells which are the sources of the most of the cytokines and these are the macrophages and T lymphocytes. The macrophages, you know, they are the source of interleukin 1, interleukin 6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha whereas the T lymphocytes are the source of interleukin 17 and tumor necrosis factor beta. Okay, I'm just mentioning these five different type of cytokines which I'm discussing. There are various cytokines, most of them are produced by these two you know, cells. Now, moving on to understanding interleukin 1, 6 and 17. Interleukin 1 is produced by macrophages, fibroblasts, endothelial cells and few epithelial cells. Interleukin 6 is also synthesized or produced by these cells, whereas interleukin 17 is produced by T lymphocytes. The first most important function is it stimulates the expression of endothelial adhesion molecules. If you remember uh, the tutorial which I talked about on the cellular events in acute inflammation, the first important step being the leukocyte adhesion. This is brought about by interleukin 1. The second important function of interleukin 1 is emigration of neutrophils and macrophages. The third one is the interleukin 1 can, you know, help in synthesis of other cytokines for example interleukin 2 this is the cytokine which is also important in most important systemic effect of inflammation that is the fever so what really happens is that this interleukin uh, through its endocrine effect affects the activity of hypothalamus which we all know that hypothalamus is a thermoregulatory center isn't it that is the reason why there is rise in the body temperature and that is manifested as fever interleukin 1 is also referred to as endogenous pyrogen along with interleukin 6 so interleukin 6 almost similar functions to that of interleukin 1 but then it is predominantly uh, you know responsible for the systemic response of inflammation which includes fever which includes production of acute phase reactants from liver. See, the acute phase reactants are actually uh, some of the proteins which are increased in inflammatory reactions. The most important one, the most important one being C-reactive protein. So C-reactive protein is actually, you know, um, one of the marker for inflammation. And it is also important in inducing the B cells to differentiate into antibody producing cells, that is plasma cells. So this particular effect is brought about uh, in immune reactions. Now interleukin 17 which as I said produced by T lymphocytes it helps in the recruitment of neutrophils and monocytes and it also helps in the secretion of other cytokines like interleukin 6 the colony stimulating factors which is granulocyte colony stimulating factor the granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factors the interleukin 1 again tumor necrosis factor and also chemokines. The next most important uh, cytokine which we are going to discuss is tumor necrosis factor alpha which is again produced by the macrophages, the fibroblasts, the endothelial cells and few epithelial cells. See most of the functions of uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha overlaps with that of interleukin 1 that is stimulating the expression of endothelial adhesion molecules, emigration of neutrophils and macrophages, secretion of other cytokines and induction of fever in inflammatory reactions. But the most important thing is that it also regulates energy balance by promoting lipid and protein catabolism and it also suppresses appetite. So this is the one that is a tumor necrosis factor is the one which is responsible for the uh, muscle wasting resulting in cachexia in some chronic inflammatory conditions and in some tumors. So at this point, we will, we will, let us understand, you know, tumor necrosis factor beta which is cytokine produced by B and T lymphocytes only. The functions are basically, you know, it is more of cellular cytotoxicity. It is uh, very much important in the development of spleen and lymph nodes, but not much role in acute inflammation. So the next important cytokine now we are discussing are chemokines. These chemokines are produced by macrophages and uh, endothelial cells. These are the family of small 8 to 10 kilodalton proteins, which act as chemoattractant for leukocytes. They are the ones which actually bind to the 7 transmembrane G protein coupled receptors. 
they direct the movement of circulating leukocytes that is the most important function of chemokines directing the movement of circulating leukocytes to the site of inflammation and injury there are various types of chemokine and this particular classification is based on the position of the first two cysteine residues in its structure the first and the most common one is cc chemokines see this is the first chemokine this is the second chemokine the third and the fourth chemokine the first and the second chemokine are very close to each other and that is the reason why they are cc chemokines the second one is CXC chemokines where so this X represents an amino acid uh, between these two residues. The third one is C chemokines and the fourth one is CX3 chemokines which means there are three amino acids in between the first and the second cysteine residue. Okay, this CC chemokines are the ones which induce the migration of monocytes. It can also induce the migration of natural killer cells and dendritic cells. The examples of uh, CC chemokines are the first and the most important one is the monocyte chemoattractant protein. As the name suggests, it is the monocyte chemoattractant protein that is induction of migration of monocytes. And the second one is CCL5 which is also referred to as R-A-N-T-E-S. So the monocyte chemoattractant protein, as I told you, it induces the monocytes to leave the bloodstream and they enter the tissue to become macrophages. And the CCL5 is the one which attracts cells such as T cells, eosinophils, and basophils. So the next important uh, chemokine is CXC chemokine, which I told you that the two N terminal cysteines are separated by amino acid and that is represented by the name uh, with an X. These chemokines induce the migration of neutrophils and lymphocytes. Remember, CC chemokines are the ones which induce the migration of monocytes, whereas CXC chemokines are the ones which induce the migration of neutrophils and lymphocytes. The examples of CXC chemokines are the interleukin-8 and CXCL13, which interleukin-8 is the one which induces the migration of neutrophils, whereas CXCL13 induces the migration of lymphocytes. The third important category of uh, chemokines are C chemokines, which has only two cysteine. The examples being lymphotactin alpha and lymphotactin beta, which as the name says, they are the ones which induce the migration of lymphocytes. The last one is CX3 C chemokines. These are the ones which are chemotactic for monocytes, the natural killer cells and T cells. The examples, the one of the only uh, example for CX3 C chemokine is fractal kine which is also you know CX3CL1 is not only a chemotactic or a chemoattractant but it is also an addition molecule okay this is also one of the important addition molecule which mediates the role of leukocyte addition in the cellular event of acute inflammation apart from their role in inflammation some of the chemokines you know they organize various cell types in different anatomic regions of the tissues or organs for example you know uh, the T and B lymphocytes in discrete areas of spleen and lymph nodes. We all know that within the spleen and lymph node, the T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes are placed in different sites and this particular placement you know, is brought about by these chemokines and these chemokines are called as homeostatic chemokines. Now what are the roles of other cytokines? Interleukin 12, 17 and interferon gamma, these are the ones which are involved in chronic inflammation. So all those which we have studied are involved in acute inflammation. Remember that interleukin 17 is also one of the most important chemokine for chronic inflammation apart from it being having a major role in acute inflammation as well. Interferons are the ones which are involved in antiviral responses and colony stimulating factors are the ones which support the growth of blood cells. For example, interleukin-7 and granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factors. Now coming to the um, applied aspects of understanding um, the roles of these chemokines in inflammation. We need to know that though inflammation is a protective mechanism, so we have all these inflammatory cells as soldiers which are fighting for us against these invading agents. But where are they fighting? They are fighting within our own body and our own body is actually forming a battlefield for them to fight. And remember, during this process, the battlefield can be damaged as well, isn't it? So that is the reason why we call inflammation is actually a double-edged sword. So that is where inhibiting these cytokines can prevent some harmful effects of inflammation and immune reaction. For example, interleukin-6 receptor antagonists. They are used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, one of the chronic inflammatory conditions. 
interleukin 17 antagonists. They are very effective in psoriasis. We know that interleukin 17 has a major role in both acute and chronic inflammation. So the antagonists for these interleukins have uh, a role in treatment of psoriasis and other inflammatory diseases. Apart from these, there are few cytokines themselves which have a uh, therapeutic role. For example, interferons can be used in the treatment of uh, various viral diseases and uh, the colony stimulating factors like granulocyte, monocyte, colony stimulating factor, it increases the white blood cell count, particularly when they are used after uh, bone marrow transplantation okay bone marrow transplantation involves a lot of immunosuppression before actually bone marrow being transplanted during this time this particular cytokine that is granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor is used to increase white blood cell count and is also uh, used to treat the chemotherapy induced neutropenias so these are few of the applied aspects which uh, i think uh, you need to know but there are lots and lots of uh, you know therapeutic uses of uh, various cytokines which uh, needs a separate tutorial for me to explain that okay so in summary we understood what cytokines are we understood the general properties of cytokines and you learned more about interleukins and chemokines and few of the applied aspects thanks for watching if you like this video please hit the like button please do comment you can ask questions in the comments so that they can answer and don't forget to subscribe you can you know don't forget to subscribe because that helps you uh, getting notifications whenever i post these videos please do share Thank you.